Now in Van Nuys, the pursuit, a very slow pursuit of a golf cart that was uh, supposedly stolen from a security guard. Yeah, this is all going down in the San Fernando Valley right now at Fulton Avenue and Oxnard Street. You can see that golf cart right there making a right hand turn. And as Susie mentioned, uh, 20 miles an hour was the highest speed that we've seen right, seen, uh, right now, about 16 miles an hour. You know, Serene, we were talking about how, you know, uh, you know, we've probably never seen this before, the actual pursuit of a golf cart um, by an agency. But, you know, if... It, it's a moving vehicle mm -hmm. and it can certainly happen. Now, we don't know where this was stolen from, but we understand, again, the LAPD is following this. Um, I know that there are some units behind, as you can see, mm -hmm. as we pull out from the shot right. from Sky Cal, that's exactly what's happening right now. I can count at least four, four units yep. behind this person. We don't know what transpired before this. So, you know, they've got to be looking at this person for something else other than this golf cart. But I understand that there was a spike strip that was deployed at some point as you saw him kind of veer when he was making that right mm -hmm, turn mm -hmm. we believe there was a spike strip that was deployed right there but it didn't work i don't believe it did and as we're taking that close shot uh, i know it's pretty dark and hard to see but we are being told that there is a dog in the golf cart um again it's it's really hard to get a clear picture mm -hmm. um because of the darkness but we are told that there is a dog in this golf cart and this all started about 15 minutes ago we're told so just uh, going down in Van Nuys right now, just starting about 15 minutes ago. And again, LAPD, we've seen at least four black and whites in pursuit uh, this evening. We can see the dog actually on the lap of the driver. Um, and it appears that the driver may not have a shirt on uh, and barefoot, apparently. But we can see that security uh, sign on the side of the golf cart. Yeah, we want to bring in a retired law enforcement official is by the name of Patrick O'Malley. Do you hear us, sir, Mr. O'Malley? Yes, I do. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. If you don't mind just giving us some insight into a pursuit like this, obviously, as we've been talking about, very slow rate of speed, but uh, this is something different, but still, police want this person. Well, yeah, like we say, you see it all in Southern California. <laughs> and this just adds to the list. Like earlier, we had the one of the big rig, and now you have one of the golf cart. So uh, the good thing is is that golf carts can only go so fast. Mm -hmm. So more than likely, uh, they probably have resources in the air and a couple of units behind it, and they will probably just ride this one out until it runs out of gas or runs out of battery. Yeah, and it appears to me, Mr. O'Malley, I'm not sure if you're uh, able to see the same shot that we have um, here on KCAL News right now, but we've counted at least four, oh, now five. Mm -hmm. I see four, five officers um, in pursuit behind this golf cart. You know, the, the person watching this at home is thinking, well, it's a golf cart. How fast <laughs> can it go? Can't sure. police just speed up to him mm -hmm. and make him stop? Mm. They could, and that's what we don't know because we don't know all the facts of what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like you can see, it does say security on the side. So, you know, this could have uh, been taken by physical force by, from a security guard. It could have been taken from a golf course, or it could just be this guy's golf cart, and he's just got it, taken it out for a little joyride. So, um, you know, the good thing is this, uh, the speed is not super high. Um, and he's clearly holding the dog as tight as he can as he goes. Uh, so this one, more than likely, they will maybe put down a couple spike strips out front and see if they can get the tires off of it. Um, but other than that, they will just ride this one out. Well, we're just getting word right now that the actual want is assault with a deadly weapon, and then that person stole this golf cart and took off. We don't know from where exactly, uh, where this all transpired. But again, uh, as we're talking about Mr. O'Malley, uh, unless this person runs out of gas or charge, uh, we're going to be following this for a while along with LAPD officers. Um, you know, we don't know if this person is armed. Is that one of the reasons why LAPD officers might not get too close to this person right now? Yeah, there's different degrees of assault with a deadly weapon. So, you know, depending on if the weapon was a knife, if the weapon was a gun, or if it was just physical force. Um, but it, it elevates this to a whole nother level uh, because now you have basically what's termed, a, you know, a robbery or a carjacking uh, theft by force. Um, so that's why it looks like they are hanging back pretty far. Um, but they're just going to ride this out until uh, they can, you know, take them into custody without further incident. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as Susie mentioned, when we hear that charge, assault with a deadly weapon, it, it all 
uh, kind of comes into focus is why they're mm -hmm. staying so far back and you know you think a golf cart can't get too far mm -hmm. but the officers have to be careful they have to keep their distance because they don't know the full extent of the situation sure. right now we have been watching uh, the dog on his lap mm -hmm. and it appears the man had something uh, a white shirt or something um, and was biting it almost I'm not sure if you were able to see anything along those lines Mr. O'Malley yeah, it looks like the animal might be a little bit agitated also, mm -hmm. and I'm sure if you can picture the, you know, the sirens and all the lights and everything else, probably multiple helicopters up above, um, you know, the animal's aggravated as well. And, you know, the officers, they're taking that into account also. You can see how far back they are. Uh, they just want everything to just kind of be taken down a notch, you know, and they don't want to get too close and, and jeopardize the safety of even the animal. So... Uh, as you can see, they're just letting him cruise along at his pace, and then uh, you know that once they once he gets to his destination or he decides to exit, then uh, they'll take him into custody. Yeah, he's just cruising along in, in the valley lot, here inside like. a parking lot of a plaza. Here, we have mm -hmm. no idea what his intentions are or where he plans on going, but it looks like uh, he might be going around the back, perhaps looking for mm -hmm. somewhere to get out and exit this uh, parking or lot that he's entered now. Mr. O'Malley, I know that um, you know we were talking about the spike strip that was deployed earlier on in this pursuit when they were making a oh, right turn that we saw right, there. right behind him, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, you see them actually getting out of their car now. What are some of the different things that they can do outside of a spike strip? Is there anything as they get so close to these cars too? Mm -hmm. In this case, if it, if there wasn't the assault with a de deadly weapon mm -hmm. part of it. Um, and they were worried. You can see they just tried to do spike strips again. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you know, if they weren't worried about that aspect of it, there are other tools they could use. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, based on the, you know, a weapon being used and the animal being in the car, um, you know, it's pretty much either blocking it off with their car. But if they do that, then they run in. You know, if he does have a gun, uh, they don't want to be on that side of the golf cart. Sure. So. Um, they looked like they were getting a little bit more aggressive trying to stop mm -hmm. this thing when they have them in a corner like that uh, at the you know at the gas station or the mall. Um, so they may be stepping this up a little bit and to try to end it. You're starting to see a lot more looky loos that mm -hmm. are standing around getting out of their cars also, which just brings in a whole other element. Right. Yeah. It seemed as he went into that parking lot and around the back of a building, we saw him go behind some trash dumpsters, and then he came out and back onto the street, and we saw officers get out of their vehicles and actually uh, approach the golf cart at one point, but he just kept going. So now he's going under uh, a freeway overpass and we're losing a, a shot of him, and now he's coming back out. It would seem to me that officers would want to try and get a handle on this as quickly as possible, oh, um, especially as he's right in the middle of a you know busy street, Victory Boulevard, um, near the Hollywood Freeway, and a, a lot of uh, bystanders uh, now involved. Sure. Uh, Mr. O'Malley, if you don't mind just talking about, you know, some of the different things that are being talked about right now. I know, you know, that there's that first primary car there and then there's behind them, you know, there's actually someone who's calling the shots back at the station. Now tell us a little bit about the communication that might be happening right now. Well, you, normally you'd have mm -hmm. two patrol units and a supervisor or sergeant that are in the pursuit and then you have the watch commander back at the station. In this case, because assault with a deadly weapon, they can request uh, additional units so that they are there at the termination point. Um, but this, you know, in this situation with the speeds and, and uh, you know, him it appears to be obeying most traffic laws, the time is on their side. So in this case, they'll have other units, you know, block off intersections so that everybody is aware of what's coming. Um, and then just let him continue on uh, until he runs out of gas or the battery goes dead on the golf cart. Mm -hmm. And that way, Everybody remains safe. Nobody collides into the golf cart. He doesn't golf cart. He doesn't collide into anybody else. And then uh, they can take him into custody when it's all over. And we should point out, you know, when we say assault with a deadly weapon as the initial uh, reason for um, for this man taking off and then pursuing uh, this man, assault with a deadly weapon can mean a number of things. Mm -hmm. I think our minds, of course, go to knives, guns, but assault with a deadly weapon can mean a vehicle. Isn't that right, Mr. O'Malley? Yes, it can, it can be uh, anything that has, you know, can have any type of deadly force. So, I mean, it could have been his feet. It could have been uh, all the way up to a gun, or he could have used the golf cart as the weapon also. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all the officers that are involved in this already know, you know, all the facts of the incident. And so that's what they're using 
uh, to weigh how they are, they're going to continue this per pursuit or try to terminate the pursuit at the end. Well, so far, we've seen two attempted spike strips. Apparently, both of them have not worked. But I wanted to ask you, Mr. O'Malley, how they actually go in to do the spike strip. It is not an easy process. I mean, perhaps easier because of the slower speeds in this case. But walk us through what happens when an officer deploys one of those spike strips. It's actually one of the most dangerous, you know, uh, procedures in, in police work. Um, you know, many officers have been struck and killed uh, deploying spike strips across the nation. Some police departments stopped using them just because they're so dangerous in the deployment. Um, so, you know, you have to have some type of cover. Um, you have to have, uh, you know, an open area that, that, that gives you protection so that another car doesn't strike you, so that a police vehicle doesn't strike you. Um, and then they, they come in these uh, folded up and uh, about four different squares, and you just you know, they, they throw them out across, and then they just lay out across the, the roadway, and the car will run over them, and then the officer is able to pull them back out of the street so that the patrol units that are following don't also strike that. And it looks like he may be cornered at this point. He saw an officer trying to put out a spike strip. He turned into the parking lot of the sushi restaurant. We can see the man is out of the golf cart with the dog in his hand, something in his mouth, and he is running away from officers at this point. Yeah, and it looked like uh, someone actually closed the back of that semi truck that you just mm -hmm. that you see right there in the shot, and you see officers running toward that area. Yep, they got and him. They got him. They're going to take him down right yep. here, and this will bring the end of this random pursuit that we have. We, <laughs> Serena and I have never seen anything like this covering pursuits uh, for years here in Los Angeles, a golf cart pursuit of all things. But you can see the number of officers surrounding this person to finally mm -hmm. bring this to an end. And one of the officers taking the dog, it looks like right there, and make sure he doesn't probably run out into the street. But uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. O'Malley. We appreciate your insight in covering uh, this golf cart pursuit. Uh, this is one for the books for both Susie and I, who have covered many pursuits <laughs> here on KCAL News. This was a first, but as you can see, it's coming to a peaceful end with the um, suspect on the ground.